Hello everyone, Guy in the Shell here. Today we'll talk about negative integers. In previous videos, we talked about binary counting and why hexadecimal was practical as a representation when we work with bytes. We saw that the binary notation can be interpreted with math to represent integers. For example, we said that with 8 bits, we can represent the number from 0 to 255. Similarly, we said that with a dictionary or mapping table, like ASCII for example, we could use a byte to represent a character and therefore encode text into binary. Now, to expand a bit what we represent, we should try to represent negative integers. For the sake of simplicity, we won't work with full 8 bits, but limit ourselves to 3 bits for our examples. So with our previous understanding that we can represent positive integers with 3 bits, we can represent 2 to the power of 3, that is to say 8 values, that is to say numbers from 0 to 7. Now, if this time we want those 8 values to represent sign integers, and if we want to keep it logical and symmetrical, that is to say centered on 0, we can represent numbers from minus 3 to plus 3, that's 7 numbers. So we can also represent minus 4 or plus 4, but we'll see later which one we'll get. For it to be symmetrical, Half of the numbers represented by those three bits are positive, and half are negative. A very simple way to represent the sign of the number could be to use the most significant bit. When 0, it's a positive number. When 1, it's a negative number. So with this notation, we would have 0, 0, 0, to 0, 1, 1, representing the numbers 0 to 3. Similarly, we would have 1, 0, 0, to 1, 1, 1, representing numbers 0 to minus 3. Note that this would logically mean that 0 can be represented by 0, 0, 0, which kind of would mean plus 0, or 1, 0, 0, which kind of mean minus 0, which is a bit of a waste of information. This convention would be very practical. As a human, I could use the first bit to determine the sign, and then I read the number with the rest of the bits. Easy. Unfortunately, this is not the representation that is conventionally used. The reason for that, once again, is math. It would be great that minus 1 plus 1 would equal 0. But with the above convention we just discussed, minus 1 plus 1 would be in binary 101 plus 001, which would equal to 110, which is minus 2. So that's too bad. So we'll use a different convention. To try and understand it, we'll use a visual representation. Let's put all the values on a circle. The circle representation makes sense. Indeed, the number after 111 should be 1000. But if we have only 3 bits to store data, then the leading one in the fourth bits gets lost, and so it's 000, and 000 follows 111, so that makes sense. On this wheel, we can put our unsigned integers. Nothing special there. Now let's try to put our signed integers. First, we split the circle in the middle. We still want half the values to be positive and half to be negative. We can now start placing the numbers. 0, 0, 0 is 0. Easy. 0, 0, 1 is still 1. OK. So we want to place minus 1 so that minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. For that, we put minus 1 at 111. Indeed, 111 plus 001 is 1000, which, as we discussed, encoded only on 3 bits, is going to be 000. We dropped the first one. That makes sense, right? So now we can continue to place the numbers 2 and minus 2, symmetrical, 3 and minus 3. Now, as mentioned earlier, we have one binary value that is left, and that's 100. Which number should we give it? Again, this is about choosing a convention, and the logic is as follows. Because of our binary work, we can see that all the negative numbers have their most significant bits set to 1. Also, the value that is left is 100, which starts with a 1, so we'll choose that it's equal to minus 4 rather than plus 4. So with respect to our original naive representation, 
What's cool is that the first bit still represents the sign as our intuition was suggesting. The rest of the bits, however, are not easily readable. To interpret a negative number, you have to take its two's complement. Before diving a little deeper on two's complement, let's first prove that what we just said is true and works as we think. For that, we can use Java. For a few years now, Java comes with an interactive shell called JShell. We'll use Java because according to its documentation, the default primitive type to store integers is int, which is a 32-bit signed integer. Let's open the shell. If we declare an int that is equal to 1, we get a 1. Okay, so let's define a variable that stores the highest value possible in 32 bits. 32 bits is 4 bytes, which is 8 hexadecimal characters. So the maximum value for 32 bits is 0x f f f f f f f f 8 f. If we define such a variable, we get a minus 1 integer. That's exactly what we saw in our wheel of number. Okay, let's find the middle now. According to our previous understanding, the biggest positive number we can represent is the one that starts with a 0 and is followed by 31 ones. That means the first four bits are 0, 1, 1, 1, right? And in hexadecimal, that's 0, x7, okay, 0, x7. And then we want only ones, so that's f, ff, 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 7 fs. We can see that this number is 2,147,483,000. That makes sense. The next number positive would be in binary 1 followed by 31 zeros. That's 2 to the power of 31. If we do that, that's exactly the next number, 2 billion, blah, 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 48. Here we were at 47. Okay, so that all makes sense. Now, if all is logical, we, take, we can take the symmetrical number on the wheel. That's the number that starts with a 1, has all zeros and finishes with a 1. In hexadecimal, that would be 0x8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros, and I'm missing one, and then a 1. And that's the same number with the minus sign. All great. Last thing to check is what's the value of the number in the middle of the wheel at the bottom. The number that in binary starts with a 1 and then is all zeros. So that's the same number but with a 0 here. And we give that to Java and it tells us that it's this number 48 that we were expecting with a minus. As we said, it starts with a 1 in binary, so by convention, we say it's a negative number. So cool, our wheel representation and understanding works. Now back to understanding this two's complement thing I talked about. Typically, I want to be able to do two things. Given a negative number, I want to know how I'm supposed to represent it in binary. And given a binary number that starts with a 1, I want to know what it's equal to. There are several algorithmic ways to make that work. But we'll use the way that feels to me the most logical and that is enough for us to play. First, there is an easy way. Let's use Java again. We just saw that Java uses signed integers. So given a binary value, say 0x, a, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we can put that inside Java, which uses in by default, and get the decimal value, which is a negative number. The converse is also true. We can ask Java with this function integer dot two eggs string to tell us what is the hexadecimal representation of this integer number. And that's the same thing, a, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's pretty easy. Now, Let's look at what it would look like in our go-to scripting language, Python. So Python does not constrain itself with bytes, 32 bits, or 64 bits to store numbers. It can store arbitrarily long integers. Oops. So if you ask for the hexadecimal representation of, say, minus 100, you'll get the hexadecimal representation of 100 preceded by a minus. And that's not what we are looking for. So let's construct it a bit more manually. And for that, we'll go back to our wheel of numbers. Let's say we want to represent minus 3. 
we are looking for an operation that will give us the right number in Python. So we can't start at zero because Python will tell us that zero minus three is equal to minus three and that's not what we are looking for. So let's start with our knowledge that since the, we code in three bits, the biggest value is 111, which is minus one. So what we can do, for example, is realize something a bit stupid that minus three is minus one, minus three, plus one. So on our wheel, if we start at minus one and we do minus one, two, three, and then plus one, we started with a large binary number and we are still on the large binary number. And putting our overlay back, it worked, we ended at minus three. So in Python, we can do something exactly similar. So we want bigger numbers this time, 32 bits. So 32 bits starts, uh, stops at zero FFFF, FFFF, eight F, sorry, I don't know how many I said. And this is minus one, right? So we want minus 100. So minus one, minus 100, plus one, okay? That gives us a decimal number because Python works in decimal by default. So let's ask for the hexadecimal value of this result. That's this number, okay? Is this correct? So let's take this number and drop out and go back to Java and give this number. That's minus 100, exactly what we were looking for, cool. Back to Python. Now we want to do the reverse operation. Say we want to know what 110 is. We know it's negative because it starts with a one. The trick is to find an operation that will end us on the positive side of the wheel on the same numbers, on the symmetrical value. So let's call our unknown quantity x, which is this 110 binary value. If we do minus one, minus x plus one, we get x and that will land us on the positive side of the wheel. So let's use our unsigned integer representation. 110 is six, we start at minus one. So minus one, two, three, four, five, six, and plus one. And we end up on a two, which is the symmetrical value of the one we started from, 110, which is therefore minus two. Now back again to Python with negative numbers and bigger numbers. 32 bits. So we want to know what 0x a123456.7 is in decimal. But in decimal that are um, using signed integers. So this number that Python is giving us is not the right one. This is an unsigned integer representation. So we just said we can do minus one. Uh, here we go. Minus this number we want to find plus one, and that's this number, right? So is it the right one? If we go back to Java again, what was this value in Java? Yes, that's the same number. So we interpreted with this formula, this number to be minus this. And that's how we do the two complement. Now, the last thing I can say is to exercise caution. When you see a binary value, you can't know how to interpret it without context. As we have seen, Python uses arbitrarily long integers by default. So any hexadecimal value will be interpreted as a positive integer. Java, on the other hand, uses sine 32 bits integer for its int type. So it's all about context. Be mindful of that before assigning meaning to a string of bits. And that's all I have for you today. See you next time. Bye-bye.